الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم Dear brothers and sisters everywhere السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today إن شاء الله we're going to resume our reflections on سورة طه and we have reached Allah's statement وأنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنا اخترتك فاستمع لما يوحى وأنا اخترتك and I have chosen you and uh, this is comparable to Allah saying إِنِّي اصطفيتك على الناس برسالاتي وبكلامي I have chosen you above man by my messages and by my speaking to you Overall, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Prophet Musa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over all people living at that time and what a privilege and an honor to be chosen directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has also been said that Allah said O Musa, do you know why I chose? Uh, do you know why I chose to speak to you directly out of all uh, people? Uh, Prophet Musa sallallahu responded, uh, "No, Allah said, because I have not made anyone humble himself as much as you have humbled yourself." So, uh, when you humble yourself before Allah subhanahu wa taala, you can earn His limitless blessings and favors, and this means that if I am uh, your uh, Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I am your Lord and the Lord of the unbelievers, I will increase my special care and provision for you. And I chose you. That's for the message. And Allah knows best where he places his message, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Quran was uh, revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the infidels of Mecca, the polytheists of Mecca, didn't object to, uh, to it. They didn't object to the, uh, the Quran, and they didn't find any flaw in what it calls for in terms of virtuous morals and lofty, uh, lofty ideals, uh, and they didn't find any flaw in its style as well, despite the fact that they were a nation uh, accustomed to good style and whose ears uh, whose ears uh, love eloquent uh, speech. They were masters in the Arabic language, as well as its various styles and moods of expression. So they uh, addressed their criticism to Allah's Messenger, and they asked, they said, uh, Why was this Quran not revealed to a great man from the two uh, towns, and this is in Surah Al-Zukhruf, as you all know. So their only, uh, their only objection is that the Qur'an was revealed specifically to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thus, the Qur'an responded to them by revealing their stupidity in, in this matter. And they said, أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكَ do they divide the mercy of your uh, Lord? They divide it and they distribute, distribute it uh, 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 according to their uh, uh, liking and preference. How can they do so when it is we who provide them with their material needs in this life? It is we who have appointed among them their livelihood. And they, uh, they want to distribute Allah's mercy. So they say, reveal this to so and so, and reveal that to so and so. وَأَنْ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعَ لِمَا يُوحَى So listen to that which will be revealed. Now, pay attention to what I say and reveal to you. He is instructed to remove his uh, sandals in preparation for what is to come. He is then told to be prepared to learn. And there is a difference between Sami'a uh, uh, and Istama'a. Uh, Sami'a stands to, to hear, which means that while walking down the street, one might hear uh, something or someone. One might hear a lot of, uh, a lot of talk because there is no uh, veil on the ear uh, that prevents hearing, just as there is an eyelid on the eye that prevents the, the eye from seeing is seen that one doesn't like. 
One can hear what interests him or her and what doesn't. As a result, you have no choice but to hear everything that comes to your comes uh, your way. However, in the case of istama or istama, this means that one forces himself to listen while the speaker is free to speak or not. And also we have tasma. Uh, Tasma denotes becoming more assertive in order to listen to something or someone. This is this is why when the Prophet وسلم, words of the light of singing and musical instruments that will spread it that will spread it and pour it into everyone's ears against their will, he says, Man ila qaynatin, uh, Whoever assertively listens to a female singer, the molten copper will be poured into his ears. That's he took the time to listen and uh, purposefully uh, tuned the, uh, uh, the radio or television to this city. But he didn't say, I heard, because uh, otherwise uh, everyone will suffer from this evil against his will. And here the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْتَمَعَ rather than تَسَمَّعَ because it doesn't imply that Allah Almighty uh, should speak. And the meaning of istama is uh, mobilize all your senses and prepare all your senses to listen. Because if the ear is meant for hearing, then other senses can distract it from paying uh, attention. You must use all of your senses uh, to hear as well as your heart to be aware of what you hear and uh, to do what is asked of uh, of you. Therefore, when you address your friend and notice him uh, looking away from you, you say, as if you are not with me. Why? Because uh, one of his senses or limbs uh, wandered. He became distracted from hearing. وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعَ لِمَا يُوحَى إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدْنِي وَأَخِنُ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا Verily, I am Allah. There is no God but me. The first obligation of all responsible adults is to understand that there is no God worthy of worship other than Allah alone, who has no partners. In the ayah before the, 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 the previous one, uh, his Lord addressed him as, Inni ana rabbuka. Inni ana rabbuka. Indeed, I am your Lord. Giving even to the infidel who disobeys him. But uh, uh, here, he addresses him as, Inni ana Allah. Indeed, I am God. And this means that the legislator and the worshipped one who must be obeyed in commands and prohibitions, and the first and uh, uh, and the first and the summit of uh, of these obligations, and the source from which all faith-based behavior emanates. And that's that's why the Prophet وسلم, said, خير uh, خير ما قلت أنا والنبيون من قبلي لا إله إلا الله the best thing that I and the prophets before me stated there is no god but uh, Allah uh, سبحانه وتعالى and as long as there is no god uh, but Him it is not right for us to receive commands and prohibitions uh, from anyone other than Him and we do not rely on anyone other than Him. And our hearts are not occupied by others. And he, glory, uh, uh, glory to him, wants us to be agents. And put your trust in the living who doesn't die. The wise advisor is one who doesn't rely on anyone other than Allah. Perhaps you rely on uh, someone other than Allah and then you don't find him. When you need him, as a poet once said, اجعل بربك كل عزك يستقر ويثبت Attach your honor to Allah and all will be well for you. 
فإذا اعتززت بمن يموت فإن عزك ميت attach your honor to immortal and it will die it's as if the truth glory uh, be to him سبحانه وتعالى says to Prophet Musa صلى الله عليه وسلم don't be afraid don't be afraid for you will not receive orders from anyone other than me as he سبحانه وتعالى said in another uh, verse قل لو كان معه آلهة قل لو كان معه آلهة كما يقولون إذا لبتغوا إلى ذي العرش سبيل say if there were gods with him as they say they would have sought a way to the possessor of the uh, throne سبحانه وتعالى فعبدني so worship me single me out for worship and establish my worship without any association with me I have no desire for you to obey my commands and avoid uh, my prohibitions uh, but it is in your best interests and safety worship is commonly associated with prayer uh, zakah fasting and pilgrimage but it has a much broader definition according to the legal uh, maxim ما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فهو واجب that without which an obligation cannot be fulfilled is itself an obligation let's take for example a prayer let's take prayer for example prayer is incomplete unless your private parts are covered and you uh, must think about this piece of cloth how many hands have worked on it since it was a seed in the ground to the thin cloth that covers your private parts each of these were in worship and he did his job uh, there similarly how many hands uh, workers uh, factories scientists and capabilities were recruited to serve you in order for you to move in life in the uh, 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 in, in in the loaf of uh, uh, of uh, bread uh, that you eat in the uh, faucet of water you use for ablution so every useful deed is an act of worship provided that the intention is available to it so the unbeliever works with his intention to provide for himself so what is the difference between him and the believer yes the believer works to provide for himself but he also works to facilitate the sustenance and movement of his brother's uh, lives. Who will drive a patient to the doctor if a taxi driver, for example, works for a reasonable wage and then returns home and uh, parks his car? Who sells to people if the seller uh, makes a living and then closes his uh, shop? So work for yourself while uh, also thinking about the interests and the needs of others. Doing so is worship. You work to your capacity, not as much as you need. And then you take what you need from what you earn. And the rest is given to people for free or at a price. And it's enough for you if you make things easy for العبادة هي كل حركة تؤدي خدمة في الكون نيتك فيها لله. This is the meaning of العبادة. This is the meaning of worship. Um, we can say that worship is any movement performed in the universe with the intention of serving Allah سبحانه وتعالى. عبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري and perform salah for my remembrance. Prayer is the most complete and perfect form of worship, celebrating Allah's praise. And there is no doubt about that. In fact, that's uh, its sole purpose. Everything else is uh, uh, discarded. Thus, when we pray, we are uh, preparing for contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning here could be pray to remember me. Alternatively, establish the prayer whenever you remember me. And this second statement is supported by a hadith that's recorded by Imam Ahmad from Anas who stated that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا رَحَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَنُ الصَّلَاةِ أَوْ غَفَلَ عَنْهَا فَلْيُصَلِّهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى قَالْ 
وأقيم الصلاة لذكري. Whenever one of you sleeps past the prayer or he forgets to pray, then let him pray when he remembers it. For verily Allah said, and perform salah for my remembrance. And in the two Sahih, it is it is reported from Anas that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said. من نام عن صلاة أو نسيها فكفارتها أي يصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك. Whoever slept past the prayer or forgot it, then he then his expiation is that he prays it when he remembers it. There is no expiation for it other than that. But here a question arises. Why was prayer singled out in isolation from other forms of uh, worship? The scholars, they explained that prayer is permanent worship that doesn't leave the believer as long as he has a soul, as long as he uh, is alive. Zakah, for example, is waived from the poor and fasting is waived from the sick and pilgrimage is waived from the unable. If you are unable to pray, even by nodding your head or closing your eyelids, it is sufficient for you to convey it to your heart. As long as you are aware, it will not fall from you under any circumstances. Similarly, prayer is a repeated worship. Five times a day and night uh, to constantly remind you that life's concerns cause you to forget the Lord of this life and to present yourself to your Lord and Creator five times a day. What about a machine uh, presented? What about a machine presented in this uh, manner to its Creator? Is it possible that it will break or malfunction on its own? Zakah is paid once a year on uh, or uh, 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 crop. Uh, fasting once a year and pilgrimage once in a lifetime. Therefore, whenever a problem arose, the Prophet وسلم, rose to prayer to present himself to his Lord and Creator, the Almighty, in the same way that we do in material manufacturing, uh, when we show the machine to its maker and engineer who understands the law of its uh, maintenance. And the honorable uh, hadith says, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ And the, the apple of my eye was made in uh, prayer. We have already discussed the significance of uh, prayer because seeing that boss and his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, subordinate, subordinate in the prayer rose reminds you of your Lord five times a day as well as yourself and Allah's destiny in others. If you arrive before your boss, uh, you will be seated in the first row and he, he will be seated behind you. Then you see him humble in front of Allah, the Almighty. And he is aware that you see him in this form. This is more of a plea that he be humble with you and not uh, haughty over you after that. How many people in uh, uh, positions of power and authority have we seen crying and the sacred shrines and the clinging, clinging uh, to uh, uh, the Kaaba curtains and Al-Multazam Al curtains, despite the fact that they are the great ones for whom people make every reasonable uh, effort. Then, in prayer, an introduction to Allah Almighty's uh, service. Therefore, Making special places in the mosque for a specific type of person for whom the place is vacated and the guards accompany them even in the house of Allah. Then they, they, uh, they come at the end of the time and they sit in the first row became one of the most dangerous things that happened to Muslims. Someone else uh, uh, spreads his uh, praying mat to reserve a spot until someone else arrives and takes it while he is undeserving. Muslims should condemn this behavior and you should put these praying mats aside and sit down 
because sitting in the first rows is uh, a, 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 an a, entailed, a, it's entailed by arriving at the mosque earlier. The owner of this bad habit violates many laws because uh, he crosses people's necks and unfairly distinguishes himself from uh, others. And because of the importance of prayer and its place among the acts of worship, its imposition was distinguished in proportion to its importance because all acts of worship except prayer were imposed by uh, revelation because of the importance of uh, uh, the event. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summoned uh, his uh, messenger to inform him uh, directly. And this is uh, analogous to a boss writing to a sub, uh, subordinate uh, uh, to notify him of a matter. If the situation is critical, he calls him. If it is more serious, he summons him to inform him in person. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made obligatory prayer a means of drawing his messenger closer to him, he also made prayer an act of drawing his servants closer, closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, here we come to the end of this episode. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.